Through 42. I have a little talk about this woman that went to the well to get some water. And had a little talk with Jesus. Amen. And then after she had a talk with Jesus, Amen. You know, God can take your bad reputation and <laughs> use it for His glory. Amen. Some of y'all ain't got no bad reputation. Bless you. <laughs> Amen. I don't have a little bit of both. I had a good one and I had a bad one. Depending on who you were, if you knew me or not. Some of them thought, ooh, I was the sweetest thing since what? Since Grandma Kate. <laughs> and then some of the other, mmm, I ain't gonna even tell you what they call me. <laughs> they ain't even called me a booger bear. It worked in that. <laughs> All right. Bible says this. Y'all with me? The book of John, fourth chapter. All right. Starting at verse 39 through 42. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman, which testified, he told me all that I ever did. So when the Samaritans were come unto him, they besought him that he would tarry with them and he abode there two days, and many more believed because of his own word, and said unto the woman, Now we believe not because of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves, and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. Let us bow. Blessed Father, bless your word. Give us ears to hear what the Spirit saith unto the church. Speak, Lord, that souls come to Christ to be delivered and saved and redeemed back unto you, that your saints be edified and strengthened to do your will, and you get glory in the name of your Son, whom we shall lift up, Jesus the Christ. Amen, amen, amen. 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 I want to speak shortly on the subject of the power of your testimony. All right. The power of your testimony. All right, all right. In this text today, there was a woman who was in the city of Saqqara, Another name for the city of Shechem, all right, where Joseph had bought a parcel of land and had given that land to his son, Joseph. Now, normally she was a Samaritan, which means that uh, she was a mixed race. She was Jewish and also she was Gentile. So there was a mixture of the race. Once the Jews went into captivity, the remaining Jews intermingled with the people who were around them at that time. And so that's where we get the term a Samaritan. And those who were pure Jews didn't deal with those who were mixed with Gentile and Jewish. As a matter of fact, they called them dogs. But I don't care who you are, what color you are, everybody need Jesus. You got to have him. I don't care what color, white, black, yellow. The Bible says that he died for us all. No one has a monopoly on Jesus. The scripture says unto the Jew first and then to the Gentile. So Jesus wanted not only to save this one woman, but this one woman was the key to the whole city. Now this woman with a bad reputation was the key to most of the city being saved. Y'all missing it. Uh, you with your bad reputation might be the key for most of your community being saved. Uh, now, now, the Bible says that Jesus, uh, he, he went and sat on Jacob's well, but there were two wells. The Bible says, open up unto me the wells of salvation. So, uh, so there were two wells. One, you can get physical water from. And the other, that in that well, you can get spiritual water. Because the Bible says, uh, the, on, on those who believe, out of their belly shall flow what? Rivers of what? Living water. So she said, now look here, uh, I can get physical water from here, but if I get Jesus in me, them same folk that talked about me, now got to come to me for spiritual water. Y'all ain't with me? See, there's some folk calling you what they knew you for in the streets. But now that you come to Jesus... They got to come to you because guess what? That physical water, gonna, you're going to be thirsty again about another hour. Amen. But if you come to Jesus, you now become a walking, living, spiritual well whereby people's spiritual thirst can be quenched. Because if they go chasing, their spirit still won't be quenched. Amen. I don't care how many men, how many women, how much 
drugs you do, how much wine you drink, you cannot quench spiritual thirst with natural things. Jesus dealt with him. Jesus said, look here, baby. He, he, he told her, he said, now, uh, I'll give you some water so you won't have to come back here. She said, then, where did you get this water from me? Give it to me. I'm a, I'm a translator, you know, common terms. And, and then Jesus said, go call your husband. What? What? My husband. For the one I'm just shacking with. Got to do with me getting a cup of water. See, you can't drink from this cup unless you get rid of that cup. A double-minded man is unstable in all his. Oh, okay, now, uh, you can't drink with the, the cup of Belial in your Bible. In the cup of Christ. Because you're going to either love one and hate the other. And, and that's why the love for Jesus is slack because you're trying to... Alright. You're trying to drink both of them. And, and she said, uh, I have no husband. And Jesus said, look here, you don't have You don't have five of them. And the one you with now, hey, you borrowed him. He, he left alone to nine o'clock. Then you got to give him back. You got to give him back. Now she won't. Now check this out. After that, she got spiritual. Now, now she said, "Now I know how to talk church talk." Sir, I perceive, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Look here. Jesus, when prophesying, Jesus walking in the spirit without measure, which actually gave her a way of knowledge. See, we don't even know the difference between word of knowledge and prophecy. Word of knowledge is I know everything about you because the Holy Ghost showing it to me. So that's just word of knowledge. Now, Jesus could have told her his name, but he just said, now he's the one you got. You know, you know his name. See, some of y'all come up here and y'all want me to name him. You know what the name of the joker that you're hanging with? I don't have to tell you his name. You call him, he in your phone. You want me to tap in and tell you his name to make sure. You already know his name. You call his name. Yeah, you call it, man. Oh, okay, y'all got that too. I know it's hard. I better hurry up. <laughs> See, the devil been messing me all week. He gonna pay this week. Look at him. <laughs> Look here. Then she twists the conversation to talk about worship. You, you know what, when somebody come up your alley, then you and I to divert them, we divert the conversation to something else because it's hitting us right on the spot. Now she want to get into worship. He said, look, at even your worship is twisted because you don't even know what you worship. See, you talking about at this mountain we should worship. True worship is at Jerusalem, but he said now, Guess what? The Father, the time is coming when you shall neither in Jerusalem nor in this mountain worship. Because he desires those who worship him in what? Spirit and in truth. Guess what? With, with a regenerated spirit. With the Holy Ghost indwelling. And then according to the word. And so true worship is having a regenerated spirit because you believe in Jesus and the Holy Ghost actually regenes you spiritually and your spirit becomes brand new so that you are not a rebel before God. And now you have the capacity to serve him because your spirit wants to serve him because it's a new creation in Christ. 
without being saved, you do not have the capacity to truly worship God in spirit and in truth. You are nothing but a straight up sinner who is falling short every day and coming to church for two hours. Okay. But you know what? One thing I love about this woman, she fessed up. She said, you're right, you own it. You know how y'all say, you own it, Pastor? Yeah. You own it, Jesus. But, but imagine what she had been through to go through five men yeah. and own number six. Uh. But seven is a perfect number. Uh, when, when I was growing up and I used to watch the you know, uh, uh, ABC Channel 2, and they were singing this song, seven is a perfect number. Y'all ain't with that. Man, y'all, some of y'all, I know y'all old enough. Y'all remember Conjunction, Junction, what's your point? The same time that came on, you probably heard seven is a perfect number. Can I get some, some witnesses in the house? I know, okay, I thought I had somebody around my age. See, he know, he know. On the seventh day, God would rest. When you meet the perfect man, the complete man, Jesus, which is the seventh man, now you can rest. Now you can rest. Now you can leave all them slacking jokers alone and come to Jesus. All right. Now he took what some people might call a whoremonger and he immediately made her an evangelist. Good God Almighty. Look here. No seminary school. No sitting at the feet of another rabbi. But she met the apostle of her faith. Y'all ain't with me. The greatest evangelist that ever lived. That prophet. Good God Almighty. Because he is a fivefold all in one. Good God Almighty. The master teacher. The Rabboni. Rabboni means now Rabboni mean that you don't sit at nobody's feet. You got original revelation. You a rabbi because you sit up under somebody. But if you're a Rabboni, you got revelation directly from God. And then people come to you for revelation. So when you come to Christ, truly come to him and his spirit gets put in you. The scripture said you need know that no man teach you. Because you can get it straight from the source and you get revelation. And people who walk in deep revelation have a problem with religious people. And they try to take you and put you in worldly systems. And put you in a box so that you don't operate by the Holy Ghost because it goes counter. It goes against what they've been taught in a worldly system and they call you a troublemaker. But God son met this one. Getting ready to redeem a city. Say, all I need is one loose woman who they call a whoremonger. Take her and make her an evangelist. And the same joker that she don't slept with. Now need her. To get the truth of the gospel. Look at here. The Bible says, in many of the Samaritans. Now, now what she did, the Bible says this. She left a water pot. She left her old life, stepping into her new life since she met Christ. She left her old life, chased after Jesus, said, you so good. Good God Almighty. No, oh, I would say something, but y'all might can't have it. Have you ever been with somebody and it was so good you had to tell somebody else? But look at here. Jesus was so good. She said, I got to go tell the whole city. This showed up good and he ain't even touched me. He did not, but just talk. His talk game was so good that I got to tell him just about his talk game. His talk game has changed me on the inside. Y'all ain't with me. The Bible says and when she came, many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying that the woman which testified, he told me of the old things I ever did. He told me who it was, where it was, how many it's been, and still told me that God wanted me. See, some folks will put a spotlight on your life. 
so that they don't see the dirty stuff that went on in their life. But God say, I want all of you. You, 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 I want all of you. I don't care how dirty, low down, nasty you been, I want you. Because when I put the blood of the lamb on you, it's going to cleanse you and you're going to be as white as snow. And they're going to be talking about stuff that ain't even on the books no more. They're going to be talking about stuff that we that they can't even find in heaven because the blood of the lamb been sprinkled over. Now, the Bible says this. Revelation 19.10 said, says this. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. I, I'll say that again. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Now, now look here. Not only am I sending you out as an evangelist, but you're going to go out and prophesy that most of the city going to get saved. Y'all missing this thing. Once you start testifying about Christ, you start going into the prophetic. And the prophetic exhorts, it edifies, it comforts. So now, as you start testifying about what he did for you, you now start speaking prophetically what he's going to do for somebody else. Look here. So when that, look here. The Bible says, so when the Samaritans will come, unto him. See, the messenger points to Christ. The messenger should never point to himself or herself. We should now draw you and point you to the Lord. Now, anytime the book stops with me or anybody else and we never tell you about Jesus, we have now become defunct in our assignment. And we're about to mess you slap up. Because you start seeing us as your idol and your God, and you start talking about your pastor more than you talk about your Jesus. Because if you talk about your Jesus and you love him, you'll start imitating Jesus yourself, and you'll realize that your pastor is just a man who's been put in the office to feed you the word of God, but yet you can walk in the spirit just as heavily as your pastor. Look at here. Now, when he came, notice what they did. They said, Jesus, don't leave. Jesus, don't leave. Now, most times in church today, after about an hour and a half, <laughs> that's a little on when it ain't. God, leave, that's not even 45 minutes. Time to go. <laughs> Time to go. <laughs> Then you get every, you get everybody else from sun up, sun down, and, and you don't just give them time. You give them money, affection, intimacy, emotions. Well, you don't want to give God an hour and a half. But then folk, they were so hungry. They said, Jesus, don't leave us. Have you ever been in church and, and Jesus was working on you? And, and the worship was so good that, that you didn't want them to stop singing? That's when it really get good. That's when Mama Eve say, you gonna hoop. That's when you start rocking. What they're saying is, the Bible says this in the book of Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice, open the door. He said, I will come in and sup with him and what he with me. See, maybe you want him to leave because you don't want to answer the door. You'd be like somebody who rang my doorbell yesterday. Ding dong, ding dong. I said, uh-huh. The one said that I got to chill out. I ain't here hollering at nobody. Then they did it again. Ding dong, ding dong. Mm -mm, I already got Jesus in here. I ain't worried about nobody else. And whoever was was probably saying, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, but you ain't Jesus. Keep stepping. <laughs> <laughs> Testimony. Then you must request his abiding presence. Don't leave. Now the Bible says, Jesus says this, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Now, not only this, 
But the Bible says this. Once we testify of the Lord to other people and, and the people request that Jesus stays, now they're going to hear God for themselves. At some point, you must hear more than your pastor's voice. You must hear the voice of the Holy Spirit for yourself. Your pastor shouldn't have to discern, always give you a word of knowledge, a prophetic word. At some point, you got to listen to the Holy Ghost for yourself. You got to be able to pray for yourself. You got to be able to spend time with God by yourself. You don't have to come. Yet. Now, I know we should fellowship one with another, but at some point, your relationship with Christ should be so good that, guess what, that you can have church with you and Jesus and the Holy Ghost. I remember mama, mama, mama E told me one day, she said, Pastor. I said, what, Mama E? She said, ooh, the Lord is getting so sweet to me. <laughs> she said, my children wonder what's wrong. I'm singing while I'm cooking. And she said, I can't tell everybody about Jesus. Mama left the water pot. Uh, she left the greens on the soul. Uh, and started spending time with Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Now, to come up and he said, now I want some of them green, but I don't want to be hearing about Jesus all the time. <laughs> well, if you're going to come up in Mama Eve's house now, you got to hear about Jesus. Y'all yeah. ain't with me. Look here. Yeah. See, you and I must get to the point that we go beyond what the preachers say. Yeah. Now I believe him for myself. Yeah. And say it unto the woman, look here. Now, now we believe not because of thy singing. For we have heard him ourselves and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. Now there must be a confession of faith from you. Yes. Not from your grandma. Uh -huh. I heard somebody tell me, I, we were out witnessing in the neighborhood. My dad is a preacher. I said, okay. Still, do you have a relationship with Christ? Right. Well, my daddy will preach it. Your daddy being a preacher ain't going to get you into hell. Right. It's not going to get you and give you entrance into the presence of the Father. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the light. No man come to the Father but by me. Not by your daddy, your grandmama, your mama, but by Jesus. Yeah. That's right. See, you can't bootleg our mama and daddy and grandmama faith. Yeah. It's helpful to hear their testimonies of Christ. But you're going to have to have a personal relationship. When you die, they ain't going with you. It's going to be you and your spirit approaching God. Yeah. You're going to look around and mama ain't going to be there. Yeah. You're going to look around, dad ain't going to be there. Your cousin, your cut buddy, your road buddy, none of them going to be there with you. It's going to be you and the Lord and you're going to have to answer. How was your relationship with my son? Uh, if you're not good with him, you ain't good with me. I see. I had some kid folks, and they want to debate Jesus with me if he's truly God. And, and, and I said, that in the beginning, was the word word with God, and the word was God. All the, now, as a matter of fact, the book of Hebrews chapter one says this: God the Father says this about the Son: Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. Amen. I see. Looking at Jesus, say, I am. Now, uh, better you better go ahead and get this thing right now. I say, look here. Anybody else you believe in? Try to say one of these defunct religious leaders who dead and gone and they bones in the grave when you go see the Father. And Jesus don't vouch for you. He gonna say, depart from me. I never knew you. There gonna be there gonna be some folk when they say we cast out demons in your name, we prophesied in your name. He said, "Depart from me, I never knew you." Wow. I was examining myself over the weekend and make sure I was in the faith. I do that every day. I do. You got to check because you know you can fool yourself. You can you can fool yourself now. Uh, the, the Bible says the heart is more deceitful above anything. Right. That's right. But know your Bible. Be so tricky that you trick yourself. Right. You show no tricky. Okay. 
He's indeed the Christ, the anointed one, the savior of the world. Break this down quickly. He has saved the whole world. Not just you and I, but the world is the cosmos. God decorated order of the heavens and the earth that's supposed to function all in conjunction. If one thing get out of whack, it messes up everything else. One thing messed up here. One angelic host, Satan, got out of order and it messed up the whole universe. But Jesus has come to be the savior of the whole world, the whole cosmos. He, now, when you want to put things back in order, you must have a word. Amen. Okay, let, let me help you. Uh, when we talk about word in the Greek is logos, where we get the word logistics, traveling to a place in order. All right. When you sick and your body get out of order, the Bible says he sent his word in you. See, the word sets everything back in order. Guess what? So even when you get to a prescription, they have to write it out. And then they have to agree with that word and the person translating that, that crazy writing that the doctors do have to have the gift of interpretation of inscription. Y'all ain't with me. And so they have to give you the proper prescription because they give you the wrong thing, it's going to mess you up even more. Amen. What I'm trying to tell you, if the preacher ain't preaching the word, the logos, Amen. Jesus, your life can't get back in order. Amen. If he ain't preaching kingdom, you got religious activity. Amen. If he ain't preaching kingdom, you're going to stay sick. Amen. If he ain't preaching kingdom, you're going to stay broke. Amen. If he ain't preaching kingdom, you're not going to know how to sow into somebody else. And you're, going, you're not going to know how to receive when somebody come to you because you're going to be so prideful. Amen. Good God Almighty. Good. Number one, share your testimony. Amen. Two, when Jesus come, request that his abiding presence stays. Amen. Number three, the Lord at some point after you've been saved will speak to you directly. Number four, you must have a confession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Doors to the church are open. Would you please stand?